Hopefully you're doing well. All right. Today we're going to do the um, rail that I talked about. Okay, this is going to be really, really cute. I even brought the mailbox in here so I could show you what it looks like. So there's like three ways you can do this. It can be, I don't know why this isn't coming up. It can be a centerpiece. It can be a wreath, you know, like a swag type wreath. And it can be a mailbox swag. So, I think that's really awesome because unlike wreaths, it just has a lot more versatility. So, I had people asking yesterday what a rail is. This is a wreath rail, okay? It has these little metal sections. It's about four inches wide and it's about 22 inches long, okay? This one is in green, which is gonna be fine because there's gonna be lots of green in our whole design. So it's not really gonna matter because even if your mesh isn't green, like I was saying yesterday, it's totally fine if your mesh isn't exactly the same as your wreath frame. Okay, and then we have, this is our sign. It just says, welcome friends. You know, usually when I do these um, sign ribbon sets, I usually do them with a 10 inch sign, but I'm doing it, yeah, like a train track. I'm doing it with an eight inch sign today, just in case. So if you did want to put it on your mailbox, you would want a smaller sign. Okay. Then here's our ribbons. We have pink, green. We have the little butterflies that matches the sign. And then we have this turquoise. We also have little flowers to put in. See, all these colors are in the wreath. What's different about this one is that you, so you put the mesh on the sides and then you put curls, or at least I put curls down the middle. That's the way I like to design these. So I know for sure we're going to need some little pipe cleaners. Okay. And we'll start one side and then go on the other. The odd thing about those, these are is there are five ties on one side and six ties on the other, which is a little interesting, but it's not going to matter because you can add an additional one if you want. Let me actually start on, we're gonna start on the side that has the more. How are y'all doing today? You haven't tried one of these? Oh my gosh, these are one of my favorites. I always do these every year. Okay. So there are 11 ties. I actually cut 12 and we're gonna alternate colors. And then I have a whole bunch of the little 10 inch curls. You're good, we haven't even started yet. All right, kind of move my stuff over so I can get zoomed in here. Whoops. I got zoomed in, then it took off again. So these are cut at 30 inches. It is normal for this one to have an odd number of ties and the reason is is because this one is really considered to be the end piece but I don't use it that way so just ignore that part so the sides are going to be kind of just like we do like for a regular wreath right we're going to do the mesh with the ribbons so our ribbons are still cut at 12 inches just like we normally do we're just gonna ruffle right up the center. And this is that really pretty blue ombre mesh that we looked at yesterday. It's really pretty colors. And I have two really vibrant colors because if you're gonna do something like outside, 
like on your mailbox, then this looks really great, especially from the street. It'll catch your eye. Oh, you figured out what was wrong with your buzz? Well, what was it? What was it? Tell us what it was, because it might help someone else. Okay, so we put our two in. You could do uh, ruffles down the middle if you wanted, or you could do like I'm gonna do, and you're gonna, you can do curls. I mean, yeah, 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 that's right. Over here second guessing myself. Okay, we're gonna alternate ribbons with this one. So we'll put these two together. You didn't know how to twist it. Oh, okay. I'm gonna go ahead and trim off at least most of this. And then I'm gonna kind of twist it in on itself. But I want a little bit showing because we do actually have some green in this. Okay, so let's alternate our ribbons. You haven't? You've never seen one of these? Oh, I'm excited. You're really gonna like it. Hello. How are y'all doing this afternoon? Y'all, so I had to take my car in and get new tires this morning and found out that there was other things wrong. Don't you hate that when you think you're going in to do something simple and then you come out knowing that you're gonna have to spend a lot more money than you thought you were? Oh. What's up with that? Makes me a little crazy. Everything is so crazy now. Okay. It is hot. I agree. It is hot. This ombre is a little bit um, less obvious than the one that we did yesterday, but still super pretty. It's okay, Bella, that's at home. Okay. So, I still pull up the mesh and ruffle them together because I still want them to do what they normally do and stand up. But you see how these two sides together are going to kind of push against each other. But since there is not a quote second level, I usually go ahead and spread my ribbon out, which is a little different than when I do a wreath. These are fun and so versatile. Okay. This is also a way to, so if you like to make swags, this is a really great way to make swags too. Okay. It is, it is very similar to a swag, yes. But you can put them, you can hang them on your door just like you would a swag or you can put them on a table like you would a centerpiece or you can put them on your mailbox so that's why I like them because you can't really do that with wreaths now you could put a wreath on a table and make it into a centerpiece but it's not like you can put those on your mailbox <laughs> I 
I'm texting mom. She forgot. I'm live today. Okay. She just messaged me. Why didn't you come home? <laughs> because I'm still here. Because we're having fun. Making something pretty. You haven't made one? There's so much fun. I was thinking about doing a little kit with one of these. Something a little different than this butterfly, but... I was going to try to work on that. You have? Awesome. I love these. They're just so pretty and my mom loves to have things on the mailbox. So if we don't have something like this, we always have at least a bow. And there's nothing that prevents you from putting any of this stuff outside. You do have to think about how bright your sun is. It might start to fade it after a while, but they're fine in weather. So. But even just putting this stuff on a wreath would be pretty. I really like these colors together. They're so pretty. See how we have this extra one that kind of goes off the side? If you put it on a mailbox, what I like to do is put, you know, little bows on each side. And then, of course, when you hang it across the bow, yes, the design group is still open. Then you have those cute little bows at the end. Yeah, in the design group, we're going to be doing some um, wedding and funeral stuff because it is an industry that a lot of us don't think about. Okay, so we got that side done. See how pretty that is? Now we can. Oh, how are you feeling? How's your knee feeling? Now we can go to the other side. Yeah, and there's a lot more in the design group now than just me. We have several other people as well. Ugh. Here we go. Yeah, as a matter of fact, last week we made a cemetery rail and I put it in the box and sent it to Casey. She was gonna put it on one of her relatives. Tombstones. I know it's hot here. I don't know what temperature is, but it's hot. Hot, temperature is hot. <laughs> There we go. Pretty. I love the colors of summer and spring. They're just so pretty. It's already getting hot, y'all, and it's not even summer yet. So I'm already starting to think about fall 
and we haven't even hit summer. But I do like the colors. 104. Oh my gosh, that's horrible. Y'all, Susan has 104 temperature in Arizona. That is too hot. Too, too hot. Let's see. I don't know what it is here. It is. Oh. It's 84 here today. So not too bad. But we've already gotten up to like 97. And it's not even June yet. Which tells you that it's going to be hot. It's going to be hot. Hot, hot, hot. All right. Anything over 100 degrees is hot, in my opinion. 72. See, I could live with that. I ship anywhere and everywhere. I sure do. Okay. You don't have to worry about the center too much because we're going to come back and we're going to add in some curls and that is going to fluff it up and it'll keep those ruffles nice and ruffly. My mom should have had her knees done years ago, but she wouldn't do it. I know it is painful. So if I put this on my mailbox, do I feel like I need same colors on my door? Yes. I would want at least something that was coordinating. You wouldn't have to have the exact same thing, but at least colors that are um, complementary, complementary colors. So pinks, blues, greens, if you had any of those colors up at your door, then you should be good. The base is a rail. So see, this is what it looks like. It is different. Is the mailbox across the street? If your mailbox is across the street, you don't need to. Yeah. If it's near your house or where you can see your house, then I would. There's so many pretty things you can do with your house in the summer to put up near your door. Well, you could put this on your door too. Doesn't have to be on your mailbox. Oh, <coughs> excuse me. Okay. I don't know if I'm going to use that. I probably am not going to use that last one. Yeah, it's hot in Arizona all the time. So the best way to attach it to your mailbox is with a bungee cord. And I'm gonna tell y'all, I walked all over the warehouse trying to find my bungee cord. 
and dog if I could find it. Don't know where it is. It's probably in my car or in my garage. But I have something else I can show you just to kind of at least show you how it works. Okay. What I did is I brought, we have one of these little things. It has little hooks on it. So a bungee cord's like this, right? It has a, a little hook on both sides and then it's kind of stretchy in the middle. And you just take these ends and you hook it right on that end and you just go right under your mailbox and attach it. And that's all you have to do. Yeah, you can see your, yeah. You kind of go underneath it. Or if you have a mailbox that has one of those little places that you can go through it, you could. Some mailboxes have that, like, kind of hole through it. This one is not a kit, but I am going to work on a kit for a rail. Well, let's not throw our stuff away. Okay. So we've gotten both sides done. You see how pretty it is? And I tell you what's really nice about this. This is really light. So this is not heavy like it would be in a, a wreath. Now, there, all the supplies for this are on my shop. And this is actually a sign and ribbon set. So you can get this with the ribbons. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take like three of these curls together. I like to call this the bundle. So we'll do three together in a bundle. We're gonna take a pipe cleaner So you can see it's ombre a little bit better now because it's together. And you need, you know, enough to tie it. So we have, how many do we have? We have one, two, three, four, five, six. So we probably will do like five. And we may do multiple bundles in a little section. We just have to see how it goes on. These, you can also use these on a, sometimes, you can use these on a tombstone if you have the right things to attach it. No, it doesn't. So when we put it on our mailbox, we kind of, it's not up at the front of the mailbox, it's towards the back. And so it does not interfere with the flag. Long zip ties to attach to your mailbox. See, there you go. You can use long zip ties. That works too. Absolutely. So I cut the ruffles at 30 inches and these curls are at 10 inches. But you can see this one, this kind does not use as many, you know, as much of the ribbon or the mesh so yep you see how I pull it up and I tighten it pretty good right there like that that helps to keep it pulled up I kind of like to do my bundles and then put them in Yeah, the bungee cord is what I usually use. Yeah, the, this rail, unless your mailbox is pretty small, it really shouldn't interfere with your, with your flag. The doggy theme would, I, I, did I, did we list? 
I don't know. I'm not sure if we listed the the dog sign or not. I'll check after this street sign look. Oh, and I have to fix your um, blue roses. I did figure out that that was not listed. I gotta get that listed. Try to do that when I get off here. Whoop. <laughs> Then we'll see how, we'll start putting them in and see how we look. Okay. I love this blue, it's so pretty. I do not heat seal the edges, I don't. So the way that I do my ruffles and my curls, I do them so that the edges are tucked in and then even if you have frays it's really not going to show the trick is to tuck those edges under okay so now we're going to take this we're going to kind of push this apart and we're going to go right down you see how that just fills that in very nicely i'm just going to twist it we're going to see how we do with one on each, and then we'll come back and look and see if we wanna add more. But you see how pretty that is? How it just kinda adds in. Let me kinda move this up a little. How it kinda adds in to the, to the whole look. I know I love the butterfly ribbon too. Even with the extra mesh on it, it's still gonna be much lighter than a wreath. I think you're right. If you used, if you used the, um, zip ties then someone would have a much harder time nabbing it i think that's a great point no, that's a good point okay i think we might need a second one at this edge here But I don't think we need one down here. So remember, this is where we had that extra piece of mesh. You're right. If they want to take it, they're going to take it. However, if they have to find something to cut it off, it might at least stop them from continuing to try. So. There is that. Okay. Okay. So now you can see this is really cute on a table. You can put it as a centerpiece. If you were gonna do it as a centerpiece, there's a few options you have. You could put the sign in the middle like this so it stands up. Same thing if you're going to do a mailbox. You can also put a nice bow right in the center. So let me show you how many, I didn't cut these off because I wanted to count them. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six bundles of the three. Okay, just like that. Just kind of pull them like that. There we go. Now, if you're gonna put it on your door, you would want to put your sign in the center and just kind of do it similar to a regular wreath. But we are going to do two bows. Let's do okay. Let's 
do one with the Easy Bow and one with the Bow Dabra. Okay. Oh, your mailbox is attached to a light pole. That's good. All right, so we're going to put a couple of curls down here. Remember that curl just kind of helps it not sink in. Plus, it gets a little cute color in the back, and we have a lot of mesh. It's terrible, isn't it? But you know what? This would look really cute on your table. Sometimes we have to put things inside, especially if you have like a buffet table. Oh, it is so cute. We have like a long dining room table, so we usually put ours in the middle. Or in the kitchen we have a table, so we'll put it in there. Okay. So, let's... We're going to do... I think we're going to do a spider bow. So the bundles, we just put pipe cleaners on them and I just tied them right onto the rail itself. And then what I'll do is I will trim this off and I'll just tuck it right back up underneath that piece. We're gonna do five inch because I don't want it to be too wide. So five inch, five inch, five inch. There we go. So remember, we're going to go in the opposite direction. Okay. Make sure that looks right. Yep. Now, if it makes it difficult for you to do the bow with the mesh on the bottom, then just wait until the end and do the mesh at the at the end. You can just tuck it under at the end. Of course, happy to show you. All right, so, see we have like a small eight inch tail. And what I'm gonna do is gonna go just a little bit shorter because I wanna see the ribbons that are underneath this. So I don't wanna completely go the same size. That's what I call stacking the bow, which just means, oh, thank you. It just means that I'm kind of bringing them in so that I can see of what I'm doing. All right. Then we're going to put the blue on. I love the blue. Remember when you're doing this bow, you're alternating which side you start your tail on. That's the biggest thing. CT, hey! Loved your design. That was awesome. with Anne's little gnome. Looks like you're thriving in your new group. Okay, so we're going to get it started. Yeah, we can pull the whole piece out. See, there's our big old indention around. 
grab one of our pipe cleaners. So I like to do pipe cleaners in this one for a specific reason. Okay, pull it really tight. And then we'll start breaking the bow. So twist and pull. Twist and pull. Well, we're so glad you're here. Okay, twist and pull. Okay. Kind of pulling my little ribbons out here. So I really like this one in the center to just kind of stand up. Okay, and then we can trim this off. Now I wanna show you why I like to use a pipe cleaner for this and not a zip tie. So when you're tying this bow on, okay, you want to tie it on to the first rail and then you wanna pull this piece and you wanna tie it on to that second rail and the reason you're going to do that is so that this bow will not sink yes fireplace as well then you just pull it up spread the little things out there we go just like that you could have your tails hanging down as well. So if you had, if you were hanging it on a door like this, you would want to put all your tails down at the end. It really depends on where you're putting it as to how you want your bow to look. Okay, now, one of the things I want to show you about the Bodabra, the great thing is when you're using the Bodabra is you see how it has this little middle piece and then it has this kind of opening in between the two pieces okay so you can put your wire or your zip tie or whatever you want down there and when you pull it up you're not gonna have a problem with having to shift and make sure that you have it in the right place Hey, Kathy, I got that letter listed. Okay. So we're just gonna get our dovetail. Yes. Okay, we're just gonna do very similar to the last one. Oh wait, we gotta put our well, actually, I don't, we don't need mesh on this side. That's right. We don't need mesh on this side because we have the two um, ends on there. Why is my ribbon folded up this way? It's just because when we put things in kits, we fold them up to put them in these nice little bags so nothing gets damaged. See that? That's all. I hardly ever work with spools anymore. <laughs> okay, so the other thing you can do is put it on your table, and I'll just use my little mat here. I'll put it on the six inch mark so that I can tell, you know, I have to pull this one out to 12, and I have to pull this one out to six. If I wanna do a five inch, then I'll go to where the five inch is, and I'll pull this out to 10. And the other side will go to the zero. So see, it's very similar to using the other bow maker. I think if you really struggle with getting things right in the center, then try using this because when you do this and pull it up, it's gonna automatically be in the center just because of the way this is designed. Okay. Just 
So I think especially for new, you know, people who are new at making bows, this is an excellent bow maker. Okay. You've never seen ribbon come folded up like this? Yeah, it's so that we can save money. People money. So, you know, you only get what you need and you don't have to store the extra. Okay, so we come in from the other side, just like we did before. We're still doing five inches, so see, we'll have two loops on this side. No, we'll have two loops on this side. Hi. Yeah, it's that way so that we can keep the cost of the kits really low. And you won't have, you'll have exactly what you need to make the kit, and it won't be, you won't have a whole lot of extra to store. That's why we do it. So after I measure that initial loop, then I just match my other loops to that. If I'm going to make my loop a little smaller, then I'm just gonna move it on my board. I am doing a spider bow. You know it. I love my spider bows. So I just want it to be a little bit smaller. It's probably a half inch smaller. Okay. See, when we measure things out, we measure things out so that you'll have enough. So I always make things and make sure that I know how much is gonna be needed. So when we do a wreath kit, they're $42. And when we do a ribbon set, ribbon and sign set, they are $20. So, because if you have to buy the ribbons individually, it gets expensive really fast. So we try to just take that out. Plus you don't have to have place to store all the extra, which gets to be a problem. All right, so you just pull it up, start that zip tie. You see how it's already automatically in that little section and you don't really have to do anything except run it around the back. So if you make your bows and your loops are coming out where they're not the even side, Try it with this until you get a little bit more comfortable. Woo! Okay. <coughs> Woo! Allergies! Concerning a work. So it's a folding table and you need to do the whole folding table? Is that what I'm understanding? So what you could do is um, you could do, like if you're doing a centerpiece, you could take like two of these and attach them together. You could also take two swags and put them back to back so that the fluffy part is in the middle. Put your bow in the middle and then go kind of towards the outside. Thank you. Yeah, it's just allergies. You know, it gets very dusty in here. <laughs> so, yeah, so somebody had a question about how to make something that goes along a folding table. So, you know, the good thing is if you have something that's bigger, you need to make something that's bigger, then um, you can attach things together, right? So attach, whoops, a couple of pieces together, and you can do it that way. All right. So, snip that one off. Now, so if you were going to put it on a table, I would put my bow, I would make a larger bow, and I would put my bow right in the center, and then I would put my sign kind of up behind it. So it looks really cute that way. It's 
spreading the loops to fill in the gap. So I do like to put the curly in the middle because it does fill in that gap and it also gives it a whole nother texture, right? Because you have, you have the ruffles down at the bottom with the ribbon and then you have the curls up at the top. You could also put ribbon in those, but I usually save my ribbon to do the bows on each side. Okay, so remember how we tie this and then come across the top and tie it to that second rail. And that's just gonna keep it from falling down. That's why I do that. Because I don't I don't like it when my bow starts falling. That's <laughs> that's very that's a big no no to me. So I will kind of just pull it up. Anytime you have trouble where things are falling, just kind of put a new piece in and kind of spread it out a little. Whoops. There we go. Okay. Now, the sign, you can just, what I'll do is I'll cut on the bottom. I'll do two on the bottom. Kind of move this over. I'll do two on the bottom kind of on this side and on this side. Okay. The best size table to have when you're making crafts. Oh, okay. All right, so my table is 72 by 40. I think probably a good size, you want at least 60 inches wide, just so you can fit your mat and a few little things beside you. And then probably about 36 to 40 inches wide. Does that help? And I would check um, check Facebook Marketplace because a lot of times people will sell tables and things like that on there. And you can get it for less. Right? I mean, you can find all kinds of things on there. You are so welcome. So the great thing about these curls in the middle is they're going to help you keep this sign up. Okay, so we're going to kind of come in the middle. I'm going to kind of pull these aside a little bit. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to tie one side to one piece. So one piece on the bottom like here and I'll tie the other one there and these pieces will keep this standing up like that okay and I'm gonna leave these things and not trim them off so I can kind of flip it over and show you what I mean so you see how putting it in between these will keep it standing <laughs> ignore it for a minute while I get the wire on okay all right there so now you see how it just stands up you can kind of shift it if you want and then here's what I did so I tied one here and one here okay now we're gonna do the fun part I have these really pretty flowers okay I mean the the leaves are okay they're not my favorite so a lot of times I'll just kind of pull the leaves down maybe have one leaf this one is cute it has these little pieces in it so, so one leaf they're just kind of I don't know they're too green or they're I don't know too something Ooh. 
so I have a couple of inches. But the great thing is, is that we'll be pulling the yellow in. See how we have the yellow? Okay. Now this is an extra step. You don't have to do this part, but it is, I think something that makes it really cute. You mean this one or this one? The wire cutter? I know Z can send you a link. Hey, Shantae. Okay. There we go. Okay. So you can keep these things if you need them later or you can throw them away. <laughs> All right. So now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some in the center. All right. So I'm going to get some glue on it. And I'm going to go right down in between the mesh and make sure I push it in there good. Because that is the only way it's going to glue in there. Okay. Push it down in there. Okay. Oh, I'll get some yellow. Let's get some yellow in here. So I'm pushing it down into the mesh. Kind of like in the center where I have them together. Put some yellow down here. Center. We can put some in our bow. And you could cut these as long or as short as you want to, to, you know, get them so that you can see them. Yeah, the leaves are too dark, so I'm kind of pushing the whole thing down in there so you don't really see the leaf a whole, month, a lot. You could just pull the leaf off altogether. It's just not, I don't know, the leaf doesn't really match the flower, which is kind of weird. I mean, it's select artificial, so they're super nice, but just not quite right. <laughs> That's funny. Okay. Let's put some in this bow a little bit. Right in there. When you're putting it in the bow, make sure you are gluing it in between the ribbon pieces so that it will catch. Okay. All right, and then you can take kind of the leftovers and you can kind of put some in on the sides. So when I'm doing it this one, I'm gonna make that little hook and I'm gonna hook in to that tie that we kind of folded over. Okay. Put a yellow on the other side. Kind of right in there. So I just hook it in right into that tie. Like that. in to the tie. We've got a couple of purples, purple, pink. We have a couple of pinks. 
definitely not purple. I have purple on the brain. Okay. That one was being a little stubborn. See how pretty that is? Sometimes it can be tough to get it in there, but you can. You just have to kind of wiggle it a little bit. See, isn't that pretty? See how that looks? So pretty. You may have to go back and kind of retouch the ribbons. It's not going to be surprising because you know when you're moving things and putting things in the center and things like that, it will kind of shift. So, and this one, I don't think I tied it on the top. I think I tied it on the bottom. It was loose from the end. Well, no wonder. I <laughs> wonder it didn't want to stay up. I was about to say. Okay. There we go. All right. I just had to fix that bow real quick. All righty. Now, we have one left. Where should we put it? Let's put it right in here. Okay. Right down in there. And so there is a lot of the curls left. So if you want the center to be fuller, if you can see things in the center, then you can just grab some of these and just plop them in there just like you did before. Well, Let's not knock our bow thing over. <laughs> All right, now. Okay, so this is what it would look like if you set it on your table in the center. See, isn't that cute? And the great thing is that when you sit down, you're still going to be able to see over it. So that's why one reason why I like these. Here is our mailbox. This mailbox has a little opening right down here. So... If I had my bungee cord, which is a lot easier to work with, I would slip it through there. Okay. Right. I don't really know how this thing works. I don't know if I have it on right or wrong or what. Okay, let's see if that works. Okay. All right, so what you do is you have your little hooks. Right, like this. You take this. You put it on your mailbox. Then you take this hook and you tuck it or you you know, go over that end, then you go to this side, and you're going to take the rail, hold on, and you're going to bend it over the mailbox like that, okay, and take your other piece, And then, of course, you have to tighten it. Which, if it's a bungee cord, it works a lot better. But you can see what it looks like. See how cute it is? Did a little ends with a little ribbon on it. Then you have your little sign. See that cute?
<laughs> I did not. I didn't watch anything today. All right. See, so now y'all see what it looks like on a mailbox. This is my favorite. I really like it on a mailbox, but I also really like it on um, a table. So I'll tell you, it's really cute if you have like, like in fall, you can put little pumpkins down the middle. In the summer, you put the little flowers. At Easter, you would put little bunnies and little eggs in it. You've had the worst time with butterflies? Yeah, so I'll tell you. The butterflies are kind of hard to deal with because they're just so delicate and they tend to like break apart. You're better off trying to find the metal ones if you can. So. Yeah, when fall rolls around, we'll do another one and we'll put some little pumpkins in it. So, it does look cheerful. <laughs> the party is here, right? Yeah, that's it. The party is here. I wish I knew how to tighten this thing. But yeah, you just bend it over and use your little bungee cord and that's it. <laughs> Did she have to herself crying? That's funny. Yeah. Bye, thank you. Will I do a curl bundle wreath? Yeah, I'll be happy to. I would be happy to do that. For sure. Yep, and someone would have crested a pancake wreath as well. So we'll do one of those coming up next week. So, yep. All right, well, I hope y'all have a wonderful day. I forgot to say, this is for Designing Gals Thursday. I'm telling y'all, I'm just like, meh, today. <laughs> y'all have a great day, and I will see you guys um, next week. All right? Oh, uh, watch out for emails, because we're having a sale this weekend. And we listed, like, nine sign and ribbon sets, all different kinds. We even listed fall and Christmas. And we listed summer, fall, Christmas, and summer. So... Awesome. That's what I, I think the last one I did, Kay, was a patriotic. And I put it on Etsy and it sold just like that. <laughs> All right. Y'all have a great night and I'll see you guys next week. Have a good Memorial Day, okay? Bye, y'all.